Hey guys, what's up? It's Jan D'Souza. Welcome back to another video. So today's one is a very interesting one because it can't see me just yet, but I will show you my face and talk to you in a second. So last week I posted a video about how I went to the Ed Sheeran concert and I thought I'd share my experience with you on that video. So lots of stuff happened. We left at 2.30. The concert doors started opening at 4 o'clock, which is quite early. Uh, so we had to walk there uh, from there. This was a massive stadium. We were sitting on the east stand, as you can see, and it's pretty big. Obviously, he was in the center, and there were obviously different levels, including the crowd pit and the far back with seats in them and even cushion seats. So, let's talk about the actual technology used in the Atrium concert. His stage is round, and as you can tell, it's quite well designed. On the bottom is the invisible floor, rather. So he comes from the bottom. There's a hidden staircase that during the performance is unrecognizable. However, typically the stage will just drop down into a couple of stairs when he has to exit. He did do that in the last few minutes to grab a glass of water, to quickly change his guitar, and get ready for the last two songs, which was Shape of You and Bad Habits. Now, Honestly, the stage is well designed. On the top is a massive display that was used for both visual effects that looked really good and also sometimes to display lyrics or custom animation design per each song. For example, for some of his songs, he had really cool draw animation effects, basically taking the song's lyrics into live real life. For example, for Castle on the Hill or Razor. Uh, not a Razor, Castle on the Hill. And that's really cool and well done, and it felt natural, it didn't feel like it was forced. For people like Callum Scott, who was opening for him, it just showed the visual live effects of Head Sheeran or Callum Scott moving around on stage. Now, obviously there were these two side screens, as you can tell, and these side screens were quite cool, because not only would they also show animations, they would mostly just show his face as he's walking around. Because typically, when, you're, when he's walking around the stage, he's not always going to be looking at you. So this is where allows you to feel like you're watching him, even though he may not be looking at you and might be looking at the complete other side of the stage. Quite cool. Every two or three songs he would change his guitar and people would just come, he, the people who would change the guitar would come again from the ground, quickly bring up and change the guitars quickly per song. He had a loop deck on stage which he was using to do the song. A loop deck, basically, for those of you who don't know, basically allows you to record the music live and then automatically just keep playing it continuously. So he would do a drum beat on the guitar and loop that, and it would just keep playing so he doesn't have to keep smacking the guitar continuously. Obviously, he had his own band. However, if you look in the actual performance videos, he does not show the band on stage. Instead, where those screens are on the side with a little pick design, which looks really cool, those actually are where the band are. The band are visible if you were near them, and they're on those little small platforms with the instrument of choice. And they are playing them from those things. However, they're all rooted to the same massive uh, monitoring and audio system. Now, obviously, this play, uh, the stage has a rotating system, which a lot of people might have noticed before. The stage just keeps spinning. And the idea is that if he goes onto that little bottom part, where the track keeps spinning, it will automatically spin in without him actually having to move his legs. Remember, moving on a stage and keeping the audience in him is a lot of just active dancing and him running around. So this kind of takes away a lot of the pressure from that. Instead of him having to run around continuously, which he still does, this automatically just allows him to keep spinning automatically without even thinking about it. And on the end of the stage is where the fireworks were placed. There were definitely fireworks and there were definitely just fire in general. Shooting fire came from the bottom of the stage, typically obviously planned before time, that would just shoot up whenever he wanted it for specific songs. He then also had fireworks in a lot of the songs that came out that were different colors and typically matched the song that they were about, like color works. Or typically, if you're a fan of a churn, You'll know album art is a big thing for him, and his album art would match a song the album's from. For example, Galway Girl had a blue color effect, while other songs had yellow or red based on the album they came from. Now, he played a range of songs, ranges of songs from his oldest album to his newest album, as well as giving insight to each of his songs. He also played some of the songs that he wrote, like Love Yourself by Justin Bieber, and he also did some weird number. Uh, number six collaboration projects. 
These projects obviously came out in 2019 where he partnered with other people to basically create a bunch of collaboration songs. But no artists actually came. However, suddenly, performance. Uh, he actually came on exactly when they told, which is actually kind of random by where an audience member, rather, sorry, a performer says, I'm going to be on at 9, and they actually come at 9. So Callum started at 8, and at 9 o'clock, it shouldn't start. The two hours flew by. Like, normally, a lot of people feel like they can feel it moving very slowly. But he's a brilliant entertainer, and the performance ended at around 11, 11.30, where I didn't even feel it. I didn't even feel like it was two hours. It just felt like maybe an hour in total, maybe even 30 minutes, because he was so good at keeping the audience moving and moving. And then, you know, what else did I say? It was outstanding. Visually, it was amazing. Performance-wise, amazing. Tom Scott was amazing. I listened to his music before. But to see him actually sing live, he was amazing. He was incredible. His vocal cords was great, very humble. And his like introduction and him playing with everybody was brilliant. He also did You Are The Reason and a ton of other songs from his album. Do check him out alongside Ed Sheeran if you haven't seen Ed Sheeran and him for some reason, which is very crazy if you haven't. But yeah, if I had to rate this concert, I would, I would give it a 10. And I, I know that's a very hot, hot take for some people. Some people don't like Ed Sheeran. Okay, that's you. Uh, I like Ed Sheeran. I like this performance. I like everything about this. Uh, and obviously, the actual like thing was brilliant, you know. Now we we only reached home at like three o'clock in the night though, <laughs> because we left the venue at eleven forty-five, but then there was massive traffic. Obviously, as you can imagine, getting out, reached home at three, at Starbucks and coffee, um, and we just went to sleep. But yeah, so I hope this gave you some insight into the technologies of Ed Sheeran's concert. I'm Anderson, the Badger Dude. Peace.